a little while ago I showed you this. It's a recent meter from EP Ever that shows, well, solar, battery, and load information. And uh, yeah, it was quite good, wasn't it? And uh, it had two connectors on the back to attach to two different devices. So it could connect to your solar charge controller and to your EP Ever inverter and uh, control the inverter and show the information from the inverter as well as a solar charge controller. However, um, this wasn't a great fit for me here in the shed personally, because although I do like to monitor both those things, I like to monitor them, well, remotely from the house rather than in the shed. And unfortunately, when you plug in one of these meters to your solar charge controller, well, you can't plug anything else in. But EP Ever do seem to have realised now that there's more people out there than just me who want to monitor their solar charge controller from possibly two different devices. And they've brought out this new product called the RS4851 M2 s snappy title so here we have it out of the box and uh, it's fairly straightforward on the left hand side we have two rj45 ports and this external power connector which will give you the corresponding uh, connector for and on the right hand side there are two rj45s on there so we've got the inputs on the left and you can see it's saying that it needs to be a master in, in regards to the RS485 protocol. So the uh, solar charge controllers and the uh, inverters are both masters. So there's port one and port two. Uh, so that's the controller or inverter as mentioned in the uh, silk screen there on the plastic. On the right hand side, we have the outputs, I guess. So uh, as it mentions here, this is what you connect to your PC, your MT um, monitor, or your Wi-Fi, BLE, E-Log. All those bits and pieces connect on the right, and your solar charge controllers and inverters on the left. There is two LEDs, one mentioning communication status, and the other one showing this unit has power. It can be powered from that port on the bottom left hand side there, 8 to 70 volts as it mentions there. So that's probably good for your raw battery voltage. Or if you have, well, two items connected on the left hand side, it says you should be able to power two items on the right hand side. If you've only got this connected to a solar charge controller, for example, it suggests you will need external power before you can power two devices on the output. But uh, yes, we shall see. There is a little set button down here and that changes the uh, communication speed. Uh, I think it's 9600 board or uh, 19200 or something like that. But that's probably not gonna be needed, I don't think, because everything out of the box comes at the same speed. You do get two of those flat RJ45 cables that EP ever seem to love so much. The uh, Certificate of Authenticity and Quality Control and a very basic manual. Just one sheet of A4 paper or letter if you're in the US. But yeah, that just explains, I guess, what I've just explained. Yeah. Yep. Good. Oh, but just to clarify, the communication board rate, which can be changed with that button, uh, the default is uh, 115200, and it can be changed down to 9600. I guess if you've got a large network or lots of interference, you might want to slow the rate. So I'm going to plug this into my Tracer A solar charge controller here on the left and my EP Ever STI 500 inverter on the lower right so i'll just need to unplug my usual monitoring solution so first things first we have uh, both cables one from the inverter one from the solar charge controller 
plugged in here to the MT75 and we can see the uh, well the solar information uh, there you go my panel voltage is 41.4 volts you can see that I'm taking 1.7 1.8 amps out of my battery bank at the moment and that's because I've turned the inverter on and uh, you can see it's pulling a small amount 50 Hertz yeah there you go so uh, it's just charging a drill battery so not a great deal at the moment 230 volts now what I need to do is unplug the two connectors from the back of here and plug them into the inputs on here we have a communication light we have a power light excellent but obviously that's not much use on its own but I do have another cable here so if I plug that one in the right way to there and plug this one into here my MT50 75 sorry my MT75 is alive once more and uh, we're still getting all that information from the solar charge controller there's my panel voltage the battery voltage and the output voltage so yeah that's all showing the same information now but I've only connected this with one cable so I now have another output on here I can use and I'm going to plug in my normal monitoring solution here it should go in there oops there I've got some LEDs on that seems to be working I'll put this lid on because actually it's part of the cable strain relief as well um, my monitor here the MT75 is still working and uh, well let's check that this is too and if we look at my home assistant here you can see that the uh, Tracer 24A is still showing its battery voltage and its solar power in this configuration so yeah that seems to be working as it should so while I've been sat here watching the information come in and uh, go out I guess um, I've been thinking what else you could uh, double up here so uh, let's disconnect my usual monitoring solution and uh, let's just for the hell of it connect the MT50 along with the MT75 plug that in there oh yeah that's booting up it's showing the information and yeah that seems to be working fine so my MT75 is connecting both to the inverter and to the solar charge controller the MT50 only connects to the solar charge controller um, and uh, I guess they'll be showing the same information won't they so well that's interesting that says 40.9 and this says 40.7 but because they're requesting the information from the solar charge controller and then it's being sent back they'll do that independently and of course that voltage will be fluctuating while that's happening so as long as the battery voltage shows the same I guess that shows well, again 28.0 volts I know 28.0 volts so yeah uh, they are requesting and having to wait for the bus to be free to make that request and get that response so yeah they'll show ever so slightly different um, parameters I guess at different times but this does allow you to um, have two different monitors in two different rooms for example or two different spaces that's quite handy um, but it did mention in the manual that to have two outputs you need two inputs which of course I have at the moment with my solar charge controller and my inverter as you can see just here but let's unplug my inverter and what happens well they seem to continue they're both powered up I guess they're not pulling a lot perhaps if I turn the backlight on on both of them well both of those seem to work fine with just my solar charge controller so yeah that's cool so that's the snappily titled EP Ever RS 485 1M2 
S, which seems to work with everything it says it does. The meters, the e-logs, the e-box, Wi-Fi, etc, etc. But remember, RS485 is just a bus, so I'm wondering if there's a more simple solution to this problem. And I found something on AliExpress, which I think I might give a go. But that's for another video, so hopefully you've enjoyed this video. If you did, give me a thumbs up, subscribe down below, comment if you can, and I will see you next time. Thanks for watching.